Things were going great. Life was good. The grass was greener. The sky was bluer. And then I got the very first of many different comments that read something like this. Did you know that QYLD income is being taxed as ordinary income? How come they're saying QYLD is going to be taxed like ordinary income this year? Am I reading the Global X 2021 tax information correctly? Change of plan, Joe. QYLD and RYLD now tax as ordinary income until further notice. I then checked my own Fidelity 1099 DIV and sure enough, 100% ordinary dividends. This made no sense to me and I wanted to give you guys the answers you deserve and I wanted to also get the answers I wanted for myself. So I picked up the phone and I went straight to the source with some very difficult and straightforward questions for them to answer. Here's what happened. Mobilex Funds, how can I help you? Hi, this is the Average Joe Investor. How are you today? OMG, the Average Joe Investor from YouTube? I'm a subscriber. Oh, wow, thanks. Well, actually, I've got some really important questions for you regarding the covered call ETF QYLD and some tax consequences. I've taken the time to review the Form 19As on the GlobalX website, and I've also reviewed the 2021 year-end tax supplement made available on January 25th of this year. The Form 19As reflect 98.2% return of capital and 1.08% net investment income, whereas the tax supplement and my own 1099 DIV reflect 100% ordinary unqualified dividends. Can you help me understand why there is such a significant difference between these two documents? I mean, I don't have the answer you're looking for about why there is such a big difference between the forms. All that's been relayed to me is that these are estimates only and at the end of the year they ran all the numbers and they determined this year that they did not need to pay any return of capital. Okay. I mean, I don't have a better answer for you as to why the estimates did not reflect that throughout the year. I just don't have a better answer for you. It's at year end that they have a clear view. Okay, so why is the Form 19A published at all then, or even positioned to be an estimate of taxes? They have to. It's a federal regulation. So then as an investor, I shouldn't put any stock in the Form 19A. I should assume worst case scenario that any income from QYLD will be taxed as ordinary income. That's the goal of the fund, to have this be non-qualified distributions. It has consistently done that in the past with the exception of 2020 due to market volatility. Okay, just to make sure then we're on the same page. If QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, these covered call ETFs are meeting their objectives, we should not expect to see any type of preferential tax treatment or any type of return of capital. The goal of this fund is not return of capital. I don't have a crystal ball for what will happen in the future, but the goal is not return of capital. Okay, that's fair, but historically, with the exception of 2020, QYLD has paid majority of its distributions as non-qualified ordinary dividends. Is that correct? Not completely, but very close to that, yes. The goal of the fund is not return of capital. Did you guys catch those crucial words that were spoken in that call? I made sure to write them down word for word because I wanted to make sure I had it correctly and I was able to communicate it to you guys. That's the goal of the fund, to have distributions be non-qualified distributions. The goal of the fund is not return of capital. I mean, the truth of the matter is these forms, the Form 19As, do clearly state that this information are only estimates and are not being provided for tax reporting purposes. I still did not get any type of clear answer as to why we can go from 98.92% return of capital as of October 19th and all of a sudden it'd be 100% net investment income, almost completely the opposite. I suspect that part of the reason is due to a lot of market volatility at the latter part of the year. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this comes down to unique tax treatment for these types of ETFs. This PDF is available on the GlobalX website and I will link to it down in the description of this video. We're normally used to dividend stocks that are treated as qualified dividends, meaning that as long as you hold the stock for a specific amount of time, the dividends received will be qualified and you will get the preferential capital gains tax treatment. But the nature of these types of covered call ETFs is that they have what's called a mixed straddle election. And they go through a lot of different scenarios that even had my own mind spinning. But here's the big takeaway here, this section right here, daily netting of positions. It states here on a daily basis, the total realized and unrealized gains and losses within each bucket are netted, summing to a total gain or loss for each bucket. This is key here. It says what this means for investors in covered call ETFs. At the end of the year, 
Those are the key words. At the end of the year, accountants for the covered call funds add up the daily running total of short-term and long-term capital gains to determine the total distributions to be made to shareholders. And it states right here in 2019 that Global X made total distributions of 232.27 per share, and of this amount, 85% was treated as ordinary dividends. Only 3% was long-term capital gains and 12% was return of capital. And what I think ultimately happened here is we saw what happened in 2020, how we had 100% return of capital, and we didn't factor in the fact that this was a one-time event. And to be clear, the year-end tax information for QYLD is not available on their website. Their 2020 and 2019 year-end tax supplements are not available on their website, only the most recent year. So it doesn't really matter what happens in the beginning parts of the year or even the middle of part of the year, what happens is for the entirety of the year, they look at the daily netting of positions. And if there's a significant amount of volatility at any point during the year, that could dramatically impact the overall tax treatment for all of the distributions. So here are my big takeaways. Number one, we cannot rely on the Form 19S to be accurate on their website. Like, at all. And my second big takeaway is we should not expect our distributions to be considered return of capital. We should expect normal taxation and not long-term capital gain preferential treatment. So what does this mean for QYLD investors, people like you and me? Does this tax treatment change mean that we should dump all of our shares and look for a different investment? Or is it a case to continue investing just as like we were before? When does QYLD make sense for the average Joe investor? These are all excellent questions and we're going to dive into each and every one of them in the very next video. If you're watching this video after March 3rd, you're going to catch it right over here. In the meantime though, there's a playlist here for QYLD that's going to help you understand if you're new to the investment, how it works, and what exactly this investment is. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.